I'm going to show you what was the main fight on the undercard, which featured David Hay, who's been an absolute bastion of our coverage here on BBC TV over the past two or three years. And he was up against a very interesting opponent from Australia, Glenn Kelly, very experienced. He'd actually been in the ring as well with Roy Jones in days gone by, one of only two defeats he'd suffered during the course of his career. So this looked on paper to be a really tough test for, for Hay. Was it? Second out, round one. This is fight number three for David Hay after what can only be described and certainly was described at the time as a shock loss to Carl Thompson way back last September in an IBO Cruiserweight Challenge. And uh, after a couple of reasonable warm-up fights, including last time out Gary Delaney, he's in against a pretty tough competitor. There's the shorter, chunkier fellow in the blue by the name of Kelly. Not Ned, but Glenn Kelly from Sydney, Australia. is a pretty useful performer. He's won 31 of 34 professional contests. He's been in with uh, the man himself, Roy Jones, went seven rounds with Roy Jones, and he's the current Orient and Pacific Boxing Federation cruiserweight champion. And you can tell by his short stature that he boxed mostly as a, a light heavyweight up until the last year or so. So it's Kelly in blue with those very long blue trunks of his, and uh, David Hay looking purposeful and meaningful. And this is a huge fight for David Hay, because Kelly at the moment is ranked in about, uh, well, 18 or 19 in the world in the cruiserweight division, and Hay is somewhere away down in the 40s. So it's another big step up for David Hay. It certainly is a big step up for David. Uh, David's got to box nice and cautiously, just has to keep flicking the jab, keep pulling out the points, try and get these early rounds out of his system, and just see, just see what this guy's made of, well, without David taking Hay. any risks. David Hay has never been uh, past five rounds in his career so far. This fellow's been 10 and 12 many, many times. Comes in off a, a pretty hard win for the OPBF Cruiserweight title. That was in, in China in August of last year. Got a unanimous decision, but interestingly, he was down to the Kenyan-based uh, New Zealander, Peter Gateri. He was down three times. And David Hay does like to punch, but as we saw against Carl Thompson, he punched himself out and... Dear old Carl soaked absolutely everything up before dispatching David Hay in the fifth. Well, both boxers just sparring for openings. David, David's just being nice and cautious, not taking any chances, trying to hold the centre of the ring and just pop the jab. He's got Kelly on the retreat, which is exactly where he wants him right now. He's got to use that extra height and reach advantage against the shorter, chunkier fellow. It's good work by Hay, looking long and lean and, and looking very, very fit as always. But the big question mark has always been over his uh, stamina, and that's what really let him down against Carl Thompson. He certainly has been working on that. He's been training particularly hard for this one because he knows he can't afford to lose this one. That was a wild swing there from Kelly. Hay read it very nicely and counted with a good right of his own. Cautious start from Hay, but signs that he's uh, got the skills to get this job done. Well, it's a cautious start by both fighters. You know, Kelly's still very, very unsure of himself. As, oh, lovely right hand, beautiful Third, shot. Yeah, terrific right hand by David Hay. Just fainted short in the left, and he brought that round the corner. And remember, this is a man who has been stopped, and he's got him in one. What a great right hand by Hay. This could be a very, very impressive scalp. And I don't think, oh, Mickey Van's having a good look at him. Well, that, had it gone on another few seconds, would have been a first round KO by a man who's got 17 KOs in his record. And David Hay landed with two right hands. Uh, the first was a cracker, the second was an absolute belter. And David Hay at his most impressive. Saved by the bell was Kelly, he really was. Uh, Hay landed a flush uh, shot overhand right over the top. Well, they are very anxious in the Kelly corner and with every justification because David Hay put together a couple of right hands and probably would have stopped a heavyweight. What? of right hand punching by David Hay. <laughs> Hay just stalking his man, moved out of the way, wonderful footwork. And down he went. Round two. Hay is so heavy handed, he really is. But he has to just still box with extreme caution now, because this guy's like a wounded animal. Doesn't want to walk into anything silly, wants to set it back up behind that jab. Well, Not look for the knockout because it will come if he doesn't look for it. Three years ago, Roy Jones stopped this man Kelly in seven rounds. And seven months after that, Paul Briggs, who's really a light heavyweight, stopped him in four. The only two defeats in his 
record. David Hayes threatening to stop him pretty early on if he can just maintain that sort of pressure. And there's a little look in Kelly's eye which suggests that he doesn't fancy that right hand coming across for a third and perhaps conclusive time. We shall see, but what a good opening round by David Hay. Bided his time, went for the uppercut. Well, he's looking for the um, he's looking for that payoff punch, is, is David Hay. I'm not so sure right now that's the right tactic. He should go in behind that jab. There it is. He doesn't have to worry about that. He can the tiles come in and Kelly has been stopped. And this is the most impressive piece of boxing he has produced. And Kelly is all over the place. What a finish by David Hay against a man who's rated some 30 places in the World Cruiserweight rankings above him. And if there's a message to be sent out from David Hay to the 200-pound division, then it's been delivered here in Rotherham tonight. Twice down in the first, we knew that Kelly could go. He'd been down before earlier on in contest, and his last one in particular, and then Hay finished him off in the second. And this, without a single shadow of a doubt, is David Hayes' most impressive performance to date, and one I think that's going to set him back up as a serious contender for much, much greater things in this cruiserweight division. This is the finish. There's that right hand. Well, Kelly's left was all over the place. His defence was nowhere whatsoever, and he knew that was going to come, and there was nothing he could do about it. What a punch, what a delivery, what hand speed, and what a result. Hey, down he went, that's the third time in two rounds, and as he went down, the corner decided he that they had had quite enough of that, and that was the contest over. Mickey Van could do nothing but agree. David, well done. You waited and waited, yeah, and the yeah. punches came. Yeah, I think I've, I've learned my lesson from the Carl Thompson fight, jumping. I think, as you saw there in my last fight, um, no matter how what, what sort of situation I've got the guy in, I'm not just jumping in like an amateur anymore. I'm, um, I, think, I think that's the best thing to happen to me. So against a guy like this, he, if I'd started uh, swinging like a madman, he would be able to catch me saying, the guy's ranked number nine by the WBC, and he's ranked for a reason. This guy's a top ten fighter, and that's what I wanted to do. I want to be number one in the world, so I'm just pushing and working up the rankings until I'm uh, number one in the world. You know, well, the end started to come yeah. towards the end of the first yeah. round, where yeah. you caught him with just about your first right hand. Yeah, yeah I've been watching a lot of uh, Bernard Hopkins and um, how patient he is. I think that's definitely um, something that I've uh, been working on in the gym, and, and it showed tonight. I think the old David Hayward went in there and just, uh, after the first knockdown, just went, went like a lunatic and possibly got caught with silly shots. But um, I'm, I'm over the moon with, uh, with this fight. I trained really hard. I was out in Tenerife, run up the mountains, and I worked on my stamina, worked on all, all aspects of my game. Um, I've got a great team, Adam Booth, Jamie Sawyer, Chris Walton. Everyone at the first base gym really pushed me and really got me into the best possible physical condition. If this would have went 10 rounds, it wouldn't have been a problem. It would have been a walk in the park, you know? Well, let's move on now to the second knockdown yeah. and, and the finish. And you waited and waited, and it came. Yeah, I just I knew the shot would come. That's the one thing. I don't have to go looking for it. That's, a, that's exactly what I've been working on, the left and right hand. And it worked, worked. I don't think there'd be hardly anyone in the world if I land that sort of punch that could take it and come back, you know. Um, when I, what you've seen in the past is we loading up too much, and when I load up, that sort of power isn't there. I mean, um, I'd like to thank the BBC. Um, great, great exposure, great, really looked after me over the last couple of years, been the best, best years of my life. And obviously, I stand to the BBC getting behind me and really, really pushing me and um, giving me the opportunity to express myself and do, do what I do in the ring. And um, unfortunately, the BBC are um, not, not showing any more um, professional boxing. But I'd like to thank him for, all the, for the last few years, what they have done, because I think they've really uh, put British boxing back on the map now. And um, obviously, as a lot of people have seen it, so fingers crossed, things can keep moving forward with, with the sport. Now, in terms of your future, yeah. I mean, this was a guy who's yeah. campaigned at light heavyweight, yeah. so, you know, you had a chance to land yeah. the big shots. Mm. What you need now is rounds, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, that's what, I, right, right now, I'm, I should have took, taken his ranking, so I should be top ten in the world, so I'd be able to try and push my way up and start, I, I want to be number one in the world, so once you're in the top ten, that's when, that's when they start, allegedly start getting tougher. But if I fight the way I'm fighting now, I'd be surprised if anyone would take me into the later stages, because I'll punch that hard when I'm relaxed and when I'm focused. I don't think there's anyone out there who can touch me, you know. I have to thank Ringside as well and the third space for just everyone's just been behind me and really looking after me. And I've just had a great, great couple of years. And that's 14 fights, one loss. The loss I think I've learned a lot from. I wasn't hurt. I didn't get a cut from that fight. So I'm just looking forward to just fighting for world titles now. I think I'm a definite top 10 fighter now. That's, and, and my opportunities now should be coming, 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 coming forward. What about the European title on the way, Alexander Gurov? Yeah. He'd definitely throw something back at you. Yeah, definitely, without a doubt. That's the sort of fights we want. He's, he's ranked number two in the world. So that's, that's the type of fighter I want. I just want to keep getting up there and fighting the best 
and I want to be the best fighter in the world. I, I, I could, could scream and shout all day long, but I'm proving that I'm getting in the ring. There's a lot of fighters out there, particularly in this division, who say they're the best out there, but they don't fight anybody. I'm looking at fighting ranked opponents. I'm looking at getting to the top um, as quickly as possible. You know, I like, I like to roll the dice. I like. To, I just, love, I just love boxing, I like fighting, I like the competitiveness of it and I like getting in the ring with someone who I think, oh if I make a mistake this guy's going to hurt me and um, this guy came in tonight, with that, with that, he had a lot of a pre-fight talk trying to say he's going to do this and that to me and saying I've only had 13 fights, he's been in with Roy Jones, blah 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 but once the, once the shots land, there's nobody out there that's, that's about to take it. Well thanks for your time, it's been good watching. Thanks a lot man, cheers, appreciate it. Onwards and upwards for David Hay, hugely impressive tonight, we'll talk about him in just a second but here